My name is Dr. Flanagan and I'm presently serving as the clinical lead for the Prostate Cancer Supportive Care Program Sexual Rehabilitation Clinic. I'm a urologist at the Vancouver General Hospital at the University of British Columbia and have a subspecialized practice in reproduction and sexual medicine. Today we'll be talking about uh, the use of PDE5 inhibitors. These are pills uh, commonly used to treat erectile dysfunction. What are PDE5 inhibitors? Essentially it's an acronym for phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors. It's a class of, a medi of medications that we commonly use to treat erectile dysfunction. This includes the common household names such as Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, Staxin, and essentially they work by blocking an enzyme that's naturally involved in the process of acquiring an erection and it leads to more of a molecule to send the signal to create the erection. Uh, this all happens within the muscle of a penis, uh, which is one of the main mechanisms to achieve an erection in the first place. There's four different types of PDE5 uh, medications used to treat erectile function. There's sildenafil, uh, commonly known as Viagra, Tadalafil, commonly known as Cialis, and Vardenafil, uh, commonly known as Levitra or Staxin. Uh, these pills can be taken on a daily basis and the system is always primed and ready for activity or you can take it on an as needed or on demand uh, basis. Typically you would take this between one and two hours before uh, desired use and the medication will then kick in and serve its function. It still requires um, natural psychological stimulation or physical stimulation so you still need the mechanism to achieve an erection. These pills just help lower the threshold to achieve that erection and strengthen the rigidity of the erection itself. So if we look at each of the pills uh, specifically, sildenafil or Viagra, doses typically come in 25 milligrams at the lowest end, 50 milligrams mid-range and 100 milligrams which is the highest dose uh, that you can use in 24 hours. I typically recommend that you take this on an empty stomach so that it's properly absorbed and effective. It usually takes about one hour for it to take full effect and will last as long as four to eight hours. For Denafil or Levitra, uh, the doses are typically five milligrams at the lowest, 10 milligrams or 20. Uh, again, this one, similar to the Sildenafil or Viagra, you have to take on an empty stomach for it to be absorbed readily and properly. It typically also takes about one hour to take full effect and similar to Viagra or Sildenafil, lasts for about four to eight hours. So Tadalafil or Cialis is a little bit different than the other medications in the same class. Uh, that's because you can take it either on a daily basis or on an as-needed, on-demand basis. The reason that you can do this is because it has a longer half-life, meaning that the medication stays in your system for longer, uh, typically lasting between 18 and 36 hours. Because of this, it also has a slightly lo uh, slower onset of action, meaning that you have to take it approximately two hours before desired use if you're taking it on demand. Now the other difference here is that you can take it with or without food. It doesn't impact the absorption of the medication uh, whatsoever, so that's not a factor. Now if you're going to be taking it on a daily basis, we recommend using either two and a half or five milligrams per day. The medication will always be in the system and, and the system will be primed uh, to achieve an erection uh, whenever desired. The on-demand dosing, you can use either 5 milligrams, 10 milligrams, or 20 milligram dose, uh, depending on what your needs are. As with all medications, this class medication is also uh, at risk for potential side effects and, and complications. The top five most common side effects for this class medications includes a headache, flushing, dyspepsia, otherwise known as stomach discomfort, nasal congestion, sinusitis, uh, which is more common with the Tadalafil, myalgia or muscle pains, again more common with the Tadalafil. Uh, this is typically more localized to the back, back pains uh, while you're using the medication. Rhinitis or runny nose, which is more common with Vardenafil. And then alteration in color vision, uh, commonly a blue tinge to the vision uh, which is more common with sildenafil uh, due to a cross-reactivity to one of the enzymes in your eye, PDE6. 
Now there are a few contraindications, meaning there are situations where it is not safe to take any one of these PDE5 inhibitors in the presence of these conditions. The most obvious one is the use of nitrite therapy. So this is typically somebody that has uh, a nitro spray or some form uh, used to treat their heart condition. If you have that in your house or you may use it on occasion, then you should not be using PD-5 inhibitors as it can be quite dangerous and drastically lower your blood pressure. Obviously, if you have an allergy or hypersensitivity to any component of the pill itself and you'll have a reaction, uh, then our guidelines would suggest that obviously you shouldn't take this pill as well. There are a few conditions that uh, we may consider dose adjustment adjustments. This may be if your age is greater than 65, if you have liver or renal impairment, uh, or if you're using some other common medications such as cimetidine, antibiotic called erythromycin, or ritonavir. Now, just a, a common note here, we've discussed the mechanism of action of these medications, some of the common dosing that we use, how we use them, but this doesn't serve as an interaction with a physician. You still have to have this conversation with your treating physician and ensure that use of these medications is correct for you as well as safe. But they can be a very effective treatment uh, for millions of men worldwide uh, experiencing erectile dysfunction. Just want to take this opportunity to thank all of our supporters for the Prostate Cancer Supportive Care Program. The Specialist Services Committee provided funding to help us initiate this program in January of 2013. And more recently, the Ministry of Health has provided funding in 2017 that allowed for the provincial expansion of our program uh, to reach more British Columbians uh, with sexual dysfunction and survivorship issues following prostate cancer. I would also like to acknowledge all of the other agencies that have supported our program throughout the years, as well as the individuals and families that have provided generous philanthropic support. If you'd like to look more into our program or connect with us, here are our contact details, uh, including our uh, email, website, Twitter, and Facebook programs. Thank you.